You know what time it is. Black bandana. Two black MMA journalists. Yeah, it's time for Black Market Picks, UFC 210 edition. I'm your host, Leroy Stephan. This is my co-host, or actually we both host, Divine Prodigy right here, Travis Clark. And yeah. uh, we're going to be breaking down the UFC 210 fight card um, in under 20 minutes. All the value picks in the top middle and bottom price tiers uh before we start big shout out to my sponsor ball club box go check them out at ballclubbox.com i'm not gonna give you the full breakdown because everything is shortened today but it's a sports apparel box uh your favorite teams go check them out go subscribe do it also uh some big news today pro gonzalez who was supposed to fight cynthia calvillo was actually pulled from the card strangely uh due to breast implants at least at this point it looks like that that's what's going to happen um and it also uh looks like uh dave cormier just about missed weight he had to lean on a towel in order to even make weight so that's big that's not good he had a bad cut he is getting older that's extraordinarily relevant and that's going to affect my exposure to that it's fight it's it's very weird that he made weight though in about four minutes and stuff. <laughs> like when he did that towel thing. It's very weird. But he's yeah. a wrestler, he knows all the tricks. He knows the tricks. They should have checked him on that, but he is an old sneaky veteran and he figured out a way to do it. That's why you can't sleep on Cormier. He knows all the tips and tricks. And you are right, he is a wrestler, so he knows all the little shit you gotta do to make to, to get uh, across the line. So let's uh let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, let me get my timer set here, and we can jump right in starting now. Let's do it. Okay, in the top price range for this weekend, nine point five k. I've got Magomed Bibulatov. 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 I don't really like him that much because of his price. But he is one of my favorite fighters on the car. He is extraordinarily expensive, going to be hard to fit in into a lot of constructions. But uh, he is a he is a top level flight prospect. He's a Russian pro, pro, um, product, meaning he has great wrestling. His striking is good too, so we don't have to worry about him getting tagged by Janelle Lousa here. He should be able to get it to the ground when he wants. I got him taking it by sub. That's my number one overall raw play. My number two play in this price range for GPPs is going to be uh, Shane Burgos. I think his fight with Charles Rosa should be extra violent, extra exciting, should be crazy. So um, I think he has every advantage here, mainly in the region of striking. If Charles Rosa can't get his, uh, his grappling going, usually he doesn't have too much luck. Charles Rosa is scrappy. But I really like Charles Shane Burgos and think it's his fight to lose. And my number three play here is going to be um, Kumaru Uzman. It was almost a tie between him and Josh Emmett. I think Kumaru Uzman has uh, excellent upside. He's a top flight athlete, big time wrestler. And I think he has an excellent chance to be one of the highest scoring fighters on the card. Travis, uh, what do you think? Uh, number three, I have Kamaru Usman. He's definitely a wrestler. We've seen his, for this GPP-based show, we've seen his his upside, where that guy can just rack up the takedowns. Now, with Sean Strickland, I, you know he's, he's most likely to prepare for the takedowns, but with Usman, you see a different fighter every single time he steps into the cage. He's getting better with the striking, and only that striking can set up the better takedowns, and if he can just rack those up, the points will rack up as well. So, uh, number two, I have um, Shane Burgos. I know he's been talking about how he wants to finish this fight, which is something we all love to hear. But Charles Rosa is pretty tough and scrappy. But Shane Burgos' last fight, I was very much impressed. And his, his hand speed, his precision, his power, is, it's all on point for me. And I think Charles Rosa is probably going to take him to a decision. But for that finish upside that Shane Burgos can bring, I like it. And um, number one, I have Miles Jury. Uh, Miles Jury is no way coming off his, this layoff. There's no way she loses this fight. I mean, Mike Delatore is, is dangerous. He's pretty much dangerous. He's like a brawler. But Miles Jury should have every advantage possible to, to win this fight, to submit Delatore, uh, to, to knock out Delatore. I don't think he has that much punching power. But 
Miles Jury should outclass this man, and if he doesn't, then this is a sign that Miles Jury probably needs to retire. At one point, he was considered a great, promising prospect. So, uh, yeah, I would have put Michael Man Bibletov up in there, but he's too expensive, and I think he'll go to decision with Lawson. So. All right. Uh, I've got uh, in the mid-tier price range, my number one overall play. My number one overall play is Gregor Gillespie, four-time All-American. I believe he's a two-time national championship, Division One, coming out of Edinburgh College, same one as Kurt Angle. Uh, excellent wrestler. Uh, top flight. Holbrook doesn't have good takedown defense. He's very dangerous off his back, but we're talking about one of the best grapplers in the UFC and Greg Gillespie. That's my number one overall play. Number one, GPP, cash, everything. My number two play is another wrestler, Patrick Cummings. And Gregor is 8.6K. Patrick Cummings is $8,000 straight. Uh, Blackwitch is another guy with takedown defense woes. He's a good striker, but he doesn't do well under pressure. Patrick Cummins brings it, and he's at King's MMA now. And King's MMA has been transforming mediocre striking wrestlers into top flight fighters overall forever now. So I love that change. And my number three play is Anthony Rumble Johnson, $8,100. Daniel Cormier missed weight this morning. Makes me feel even better about that play. Going to probably decrease my exposure to Cormier. Um, every little thing counts here. And Cormier struggling with his weight cut is not a good sign. I mean, he didn't even really make it, you know. So, um, Anthony Johnson is somebody I like a lot. As Cormier couldn't even make weight this morning. Uh, Divine Prodigy, what's good? I have the same exact three, I think, for this GPP. You're going to want to build in the mid-tier. And... Um, uh, uh, honorable mention goes to Gegard Musasi because I believe he's going to beat Chris Whiteman. He's more so on the upswing. Chris Whiteman's defense is always a suspect. But just honorable mention. Number three, I have Rumble Johnson, as you said. Um, this, it's Rumble's time. I think it's Rumble's time. Uh, Cormier's going in this fight way too confident, it seems to me, which confidence is not is, is not a bad thing at all. But he, he's I will always beat Rumble, and he, he thinks this fight is going to go play out the same way as where Rumble will be aggressive, and then he'll get tired, and then he'll round up. He'll, he'll pound him out. But I don't think it'll go that way. I think Rumble, for his his upside and for the power that he possesses, he could flip the tables and possibly even wrestle DC. But I like Rumble to get it done with a punch that'll land not to the not to the top of the head this time, but more so on the chin and deliver that knockout blow. And uh, number two, uh, who did you say was number two? Who did you say was number two? Number Patrick two was Cummins. Uh, Patrick Cummins. Patrick Cummins from Kings MMA. Now, if he can only protect his chin, we know Jan Blakowicz does not have the takedown defense. If you basically get Jan Blackwood down, he's down for that whole round. I don't see him getting back up. Patrick Cummins is a great wrestler. We know he knows what he, he needs to do. He doesn't come out and try to strike with you. He comes out, maybe jabs, just sets up to close the distance. And that's what I like. Do what you need to do. Don't do what you need to do. Number one is uh Gregor Galepsi. Galepsi. Andrew Holbrook is touted as a guy who's who, who's great off his back. But that's the problem with this. Gregor Galepsi probably knows this. I mean, I mean, yeah, Greg Gillespie probably knows this. Just rustle him down. He can, oh, my goodness, he can rack up the points. Just like him and Patrick Cummins on the same team, which I think will probably be popular. So you'll need to find that one differentiation in your lineup that will get you there to the top. But him, Patrick Cummins, and maybe in Rumble, I think is a great starting pad. But Gillespie all day should just take Andrew Holbrook down at will. Just has to watch him for the submissions from off his back. Okay, let's go into the lower tier now. Uh, my top overall player in the lower tier is going to be $7,100, Charles Oliveira. He is a must in GPPs. Uh, he is either going to get uh, he's either going to get outstruck at a distance here, or he's going to finish by submission um, and put on a, a dominant grappling performance. I know Will Brooks is a great wrestler. Charles Oliveira is a must in GPPs. He's my number one overall player. Irene Aldana is going to be my number two overall player, $7,500. Um, that fight between her and Caitlin Chukagian is very close. I'm picking Chukagian, but Aldana could very well take it. It's super even. So she's my number two play. And number three is going to be now that Pearl Gonzalez is gone. It will be between Sean Strickland and Tiago Alves. I'm going to go with Tiago Alves because I like the uh, the potential for a knockout in that fight with uh, Patrick Cote. So Tiago Alves is one of my uh, he's one of my favorite uh, plays here, and um, 
Yeah, uh, even though I think he's uh, one of those post USADA guys, Brazilian, hadn't been looking the same. Uh, I don't like it, but I like that fight, and I think he's the better technical striker, even though he's declined uh, and in his muscular or as fast anymore. We got to be watching out for. I think he's on Eric Silva mode or something like that, boy. <laughs> Definitely watching out for that. Travis, what do you think? Um, number three, I have Sean Strickland. I know we talk Kamar Usman. I, I really like Kamar Usman. But if Sean Strickland, well, does, doesn't he fight out of tri TriStar, I believe? Right? Is that, is that correct? Oh, uh, no. That's Sean Tom Breed. Ah, ah, okay. Wrong wrong person. But Sean, I'm sorry. Sean Strickland, though. He knows that Kamara's coming out here to wrestle him. His takedown defense was already pretty great. I think it's like 80% or above. And if he can keep this fight standing, he should have the, the jabs and the range and the precision to just just get a decision win. And at 7,000, that, that's pretty much all you need to differ, differentiate you from the other f five players in your lineup to win a GPP. So I like Sean Strickland just off that chance that he uh, actually stopped the takedowns, though. Usman changed his, his 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 takedowns very um really well. Um, number two, I have who did you say? Who did you say? Irene Aldana. No, no. See, now switch it. Now switch it. Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira is number two. Okay. Charles Oliveira is number two. Um, Charles in his last fight with Anthony Pettis, he's been known as a quitter, but he did not quit in that fight. Anthony Pettis gave him a mean body kick, and instead of Charles Oliveira quitting, he actually pushed through and almost I think he was he was on the verge of turning things around against Anthony Pettis. So Charles Oliveira, you know Will Brooks is probably going to come out and wrestle him. His striking is still on all the way there, even though he has the meat and potatoes of this game. But um, if Charles Oliveira has always been funky off his back, he's always been just dangerous. In any position you put him in on the ground, he feels at home. Will Brooks is definitely a wrestler. I like Will Brooks, but Charles Oliveira at this price, uh, you got to take the chance. You got to take the chance. You got to take the chance, especially for the upside that Charles Oliveira brings with a, a possible submission. So I like Charles Oliveira. Number one is Irene Ald Aldana. Against Leslie Smith, I guess it was a setup fight for her, but um, Leslie Smith has the pressure. She had the pressure to um, attack Irene Aldana. Irene Aldana, I don't think Caitlin Trukagian has that pressure that's needed to beat Irene Aldana. Irene Aldana averages about seven significant strikes per minute. She 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 can land. I like her. Usually been on target women's fights, but this one I feel very good about. She has the punching power as well. A lot of her fights are stopped in the first round. But it's after that first round where it's a little shaky. But, I mean, we even seen her still pulling the strikes against Leslie Smith. At, and that fight went all three, I believe. Didn't it, didn't it, didn't it go all three? Uh, yeah. I believe, it, I believe it went all three. And she put up like 109 significant strikes or something like that. I like Irina Donna. Caitlin Trugigian is more so, she one of those Holly Holm types where she grunts and all that with all her, her strikes, even though she's probably not even hitting you. But I like Irina Donna to pull on the pressure and come forward instead of being backed up like she was against Leslie Smith and get that. I'll say finish. I think she'll get the finish. So that's and the is that a wrap? That is a wrap. Just want to say one thing. I'm dealing with this weight cut. Weight, cutting weight sucks. You know, I got to fight May 13th, my first, my first amateur fight against Are Austin you already cutting? I'm cutting. I'm cutting right now, man. I'm cutting. I'm cutting, and it's, it sucks, but I'm cutting. How many? Damn, why are you cutting so early? Is it a test cut? No, I just I just need to make sure I'm down. I want to make sure. i got to make sure. What you fighting at? I'm fighting at 170, and right now I'm like, uh, 197. So it's like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, gotta go. Are right you now. losing fat right now, or like, what are you doing? We trying to, we're losing, we're probably losing fat. It's not, it's not. Yeah. I'm losing fat. And so, you want to yeah. be down around, probably. You fighting at 170? I'm fighting at 170. Fight week is May 13th, so you the week be at, down at, like 185. Uh, probably even lower. Like I say, at least 180 by that time. By the time May 6 come around. I want to be like 180 so I can just Walk chomp it, it off, just fall it off. My plan is to run about five miles, like three times or four times a week, and just hope the weight just just drops off just from running. Put like a little Tour de France little jacket on and just just go five miles, like three times a week. Man. Just drop it. You Have you consult? Well, you ain't making no money yet, so you shouldn't consult the nutritionist. <laughs> but uh, No, I'm talking to the, the guys I, I train, the, the my coaches I train with. Like one guy, he almost fought Kunt. Kun Lay before, but uh, I think something happened. I think he got beat. But if he would have won, he would have fought Kun Lay. So, I mean, he's pretty extravagant. Uh, Kung Lee. Uh, he's Kung Lee. That's what I meant. I meant Kung Lee. I'm over here tripping. But he's about 23 years of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he knows Muay Thai and all that. So, I mean, I listen to him. His name is Herb 
we call him Herb. We just call him Herb. I forgot his last name, but he he's very uh he's experienced. He's he fought in these different type of emotions. So he know his weight cutting to the secrets. If you have yeah. any, if you have any problems, I just uh call him my my wrestling buddy that was on the yeah. show. Yeah, call on him. Then there's another guy I trained with. He's actually pro. He's like three and four as a pro, but he's cut weight before. Like he he has a fight May 13th as well on the same card as me. Have you ever fight. cut you ever cut weight before? I've never cut weight before, so it's different. So that's why I cons I consult these people, ask them how are they doing it. And he's like, man, I just run. I'm like, well, shit. Well, of course, eating goes with it too. You gotta have your diet great. You oh, gotta shit. drink water. Looks like Stay we got. Me. Looks like we got a bad connection. So, I guess that's gonna be it for this weekend, uh, yeah. guys. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry for rambling on, but Divine Prodigy has a fight. We're gonna have to. We're gonna yeah. have to start like a blog series, man. You training for your fights and stuff like that, and put it up. Yeah, on stuff the, like this, man. Put it up on the channel. But uh, if you want the full breakdown of the card, this was the uh, the uh, value picks. Go check out the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. It's an hour and nineteen minutes. It's me, Beast Mocal, Eric F, and Pretty Boy EJ Brooks. He's going to be for fighting a uh, former gay porn star Dakota Cochrane this uh, well oh. April fourteenth, I believe, next Friday. So. Can't lose that fight. Can't lose to a gay porn star. I was going to bring it up more on the show, but he got mad. I think the organization was pissed because I posted something. Good. <laughs> Wasn't that your former roommate, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no big deal. All right. All right, guys. That's it for this week, guys. Uh, peace. We out.